up everyone my name is Ursi and welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm gonna give you the list of my favorite books so far now these are my favorite books right now I just felt like it would be really fun to film this have this be my opinion of my thoughts the end of July 2021 and just see how it changes over the years I, I think it'd be really fun to see to, to kind of do this video every year and see how my tastes change over the years as I read more books. Maybe my opinions on these might change. These are just my favorites right now. Um, I wound up making a list of 10 books and they are in no particular order. They're just my favorites right now. So I guess this is kind of a way for you guys to kind of get to know my taste in books. I have some fantasy, sci-fi, um, YA, uh, historical fiction. I, I feel like that's sort of the, the my niche in terms of the books that I read. Oh, I've, I've got one that's like a classic, like a modern classic. But yeah, so this is just, I guess, another way for you guys to get to know me and see if our tastes align. So here are my top 10 favorite books right now. The first book on my list is a classic, and that's Animal Farm by George Orwell. Now this book is a political satire that can also be classified as a fable. I've also seen this classified as a dystopian novella, but whatever it is, it's still one of my favorite books of all time. This was published in 1945, right before the end, the official end of the Second World War. This is supposed to be a satire of communist regimes, particularly a critique of Stalinist Russia. George Orwell was a very vocal opponent of Stalinist Russia, and so he made this book as sort of a critique on that. I've read this quite a few times, and I really love this book every time that I read it. I always learn new things about this, and in case you didn't know, this book follows a group of animals that live on this farm, and they have a neglectful farmer owner, right? And they rebel against him. And two pigs, Snowball and Napoleon, wind up sort of taking over and leading the animals and they have like, they form like this uh, religion and, and this, um, this sort of political system throughout the farm. And over the years, you know, it winds up morphing and being transformed into uh, this dictatorship. I just really loved what Orwell was able to do in such a small amount of space. So if you've never read this book, please do. You can read this in a day or two. It's very, very short, but very powerful. And I feel like the references or what he's trying to say in this book is not difficult to comprehend either. So even though it's got really big ideas, they're really easy to follow as well. I just really love this book and it's entertaining too. So that's Animal Farm by George Orwell, one of my faves. The next book on my list is more of a recent read, and I'll put a picture up because I don't have a physical copy of the book, but it's Remote Control by Nettie Okorafor, and this is a sci-fi novella that was published this year. I read it last month for the uh, Shelf Space Olympics uh, readathon. I loved it. It was it quickly became one of my favorite books. I felt like this was such an original story, and it was so unique, and it was really cool. Again, another short story, but very effective in what she was trying to achieve in this book. So this book follows a girl, her name is Sankofa or Fatima, and she stumbles upon this alien relic that, that sort of changes her and gives her this power to evoke death. It's a coming of age story, it's about a girl dealing with grief and loneliness, and it was just such a really good book and very entertaining. The audiobook is really interesting to listen to as well. I don't know when, but I will be picking up a physical copy of this book because it is one of my favorites. If you've never read this book, please do. Again, another short one, but it's one of my favorites. So that's Remote Control by Nettie Okorafor. The next book on my list is Angels and Demons by Dan Brown, and this is a thriller. I don't read many thrillers, but this one is, but this one has always been a favorite of mine. This is the first of the Robert Langdon series by Dan Brown, and I've only read this one and The Da Vinci Code, but I, I really like this one much more than The Da Vinci Code. And it follows this Harvard cryptologist, and his name is Robert Langdon, and he is asked to go to this research facility and help them solve this crime of this uh, murdered physicist. 
But what's interesting about this is that it follows this crime, but it's also the the story of like the Illuminati, right? And it's just really interesting. And there's so many twists and turns. It, it's a lot of fun. And I can see why a lot of people really like this book. Um, it's not perfect, but um, I really enjoy reading this. And not only does it follow uh, like the lore of like secret societies and the Illuminati, but this one takes place throughout Rome and the Vatican. And having lived in Italy for a period of time and seeing the places that he mentioned within this book just kind of brought this up to a whole nother level. And I really felt like he was able to capture a lot of the beauty of the Vatican City and Rome and stuff. So I really had a good time reading this book. I never regret rereading this. So I've, I've already read this like three, four times. So that's Angels and Demons by Dan Brown. Now let's move on to fantasy. The first one I want to mention is Cersei by Madeline Miller. Now my friend still has my copy of this, so this is just a dust jacket, and it's one of my faves. So I'll, I'm just going to put this down. So this follows the story of Cersei, and she's a demigod, and she is exiled to live on this island, and it, it tells the story of her exile and her time there and the people that she meets, and it's sort of this story of her life while she's there on this island. And I just found it to be really compelling and very interesting. We have all these, uh, this integration of the Greek gods as well. I just really love this book and it's so well written. It's beautifully written. It's so good. If you have a chance to check it out, please do. It's just one book. It's a standalone too. So that kind of makes it easier to just kind of pick up and, and just digest. Um, there's not this commitment to long series, but yeah, it's just a really good book. And I implore everyone to just give it a chance. It's a book you want to take your time with because it is like a life story. I just love the character development in this and the way that she's able to hone her powers and, and just become who she wants to be despite this punishment that was bestowed upon her by the gods and stuff. So um, it's a really good book. Give it a chance. It's Cersei by Madeline Miller. The next fantasy I want to talk about is A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. Now this is the third book of the Ice and Fire series by him, and I know it's not a complete series, but this particular book I felt like it did so much and it was amazing. I feel like out of the series, I mean Game of Thrones is a really great start, super iconic, right? Uh, Clash of Kings, also amazing. There's just something about A Storm of Swords that I feel like is just so amazing. And I, I just love this book. I mean, so many iconic scenes in this book. We got the Red Wedding. We have Daenerys and Astapor. We got the Wildlings Beyond the Wall. I mean, it's just so many iconic things in this book. And I just felt like it was really good, well written. I love this. I love this series. I don't care what anyone says. It's still really good. <laughs> it's breaking my heart that the series is not complete. But it's still a great book. I love this one. If you haven't read Game of Thrones or any of the other books, please do. Um, so yeah, that's A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. The next book that is a fantasy book is uh, Brissinger by Christopher Pellini. Now, I don't have the physical copy of this because the copy that I did have was like a really old used copy. It didn't match. Like I had all four books of the series of the Inheritance Cycle, but none of them matched. I wound up selling them, I mean, for pennies, you know what I mean, at the like a second hand bookstore in the hopes that later on I'll find like a nice set of all four books that match. But my favorite of the of the series is the third one and that's Brissinger. Now this one broke my heart. <laughs> there's, a, there's a scene in this book that I literally cried my eyes out, threw the book across the room and was just sobbing. And my husband's like making fun of me because he already read the book and he like knew what was coming. And he made me read it out loud. He's like, read the book. He'll have me do that sometimes. Just like, you know, if it's a book that he's read already and he knows that I'm reading it, he's like, read it out loud. I want to know what part you're at. And it's like, he knew this scene was coming up and he made me read it out loud. I was a mess. And he was like, 
I knew you were going to cry. I'm like, why'd you make me do it? <laughs> but anyways, very sadistic. <laughs> I promise you, he's not crazy. It was just, he knew the scene was coming up. But anyways, the third book was just really great. I mean, obviously the fourth book, you have the culmination of everything that's been building up for the past few books. But I feel like the third one is the strongest of that series. Just because of like, at this point, Aragon has already been learning a lot. You're, you're learning a lot about the cultures of the different societies in the book. And this is the point in the book where I feel like a lot of it is starting to come together. That way we have that entryway into the fourth book. And I just felt like it was the strongest out of the four. Like there are reasons for Aragon to go and defeat the dark forces that are ruling over Alagazia. But I felt like this book really put him over the edge with what happens in this book to really inspire him to push past his insecurities and go forth and be the powerful person that he is, right? <laughs> but yeah, this one, this one is definitely one of my favorite books. I felt like it was so good, so intriguing, so amazing, right? So that's Brissinger by Christopher Pellini. The last fantasy on my list is another YA fantasy and another recent read from June, and that's Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. Now, I won't talk your ears off about it because I talked about it a lot in a few other videos, but this is a Mulan retelling and it was published in 2018. This book is just so good. I love Mulan retellings. I think they're really, Mulan was always one of my favorite Disney characters and I just felt like this book just showed how badass she was and the inner turmoil that she went through hiding who she is but trying to honor her family and rediscover that power within herself to kind of be true to who she is on top of that i felt like just the the themes in this book i mean mulan is going to the underworld to go rescue captain shang and i just felt like the change in the story i mean the original story is already like badass right but the change in this just kind of took it up another level for me and i just really love this story so much so please check it out even if you're not into the twisted tales from the disney series of books just check out this one because this one's really good i mean mulan's a soldier under disguise trying to you know she's dressed like a man in order to take the place of her father who was injured in the last war yeah, she, she goes to the underworld to save Captain Chang. So that's this book, and I felt like it was really good. It's really weird looking at my list because there are three YA books on this, including this next one that I'm going to talk about. And it's really interesting because I don't really read a lot of YA. Um, a lot of my books are adult books. But this next book, I just felt like it. I related to this so much. Now, if you want to know me as like a teenager growing up in New York City, right? read The Poet X. I related to this book so much. It's by Elizabeth Acevedo, and this is a book written in verse. Now, this story follows Xiomara. She's living in New York with her family, and her mom is from the Dominican Republic, and I believe both her parents were. I don't know. I, I don't remember if her dad was Puerto Rican. I might be confusing it with the other books, but they're from the Caribbean, right? Uh, either the Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico, but her mom is from the Dominican Republic. Xiomara is a first-generation Latinx kid growing up in New York City. She's loud, a little obnoxious, has anger within her. She's got a fuller body. She's just like curvier than more girls. She has this turmoil with her mom because her mom is you know, she's just straight Dominican. You know? <laughs> she's like, she's very religious. That's just not who Siamata is. And it's just like, there's so many things in this book that I felt like just spoke to me as like another first generation Dominican kid. I just felt like if you want to know me, read this book. Because <laughs> I felt, I related to her so much in this book and I've never felt so seen in a book as I have with this one. And because it's written in verse, it, it goes by a lot faster as well. An award-winning book for many good reasons as well. It's beautifully written, beautifully told. If you're gonna listen to the audiobook too, the author is the one that narrates it and she was like a, a slam poet person, right? Like she 
She does a lot of spoken word. She just narrates this so beautifully. She also narrates all her other books. I mean, for good reason, because she's so good. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, it's just like, what's it like being a teenager in New York City? The differences between uh, one generation to the next, especially, you know, having this culture clash in your own household. And that's sort of the way that I grew up. I mentioned this in the video that I did about immigration stories. Um, I am first generation. I was born in the US, I was born in New York City, um, me and my younger brother, but my parents and my older brother were both born in the Dominican Republic. We just always had this culture, me and my siblings, we've always had this culture clash with our parents because just because we're so different. You know, we're very much Americanized, but even being Americanized, there's sort of this Latinx culture that you take part in and identify with. It's just hard because like I tell myself, yeah, I'm Dominican, I'm Hispanic, right? But then when I go visit family in Dominican Republic, like I'm the white girl, I'm the gringa, right? Um, I don't identify with a lot of my cousins there, but I can't really identify truly with a lot of Americans here too, despite being born here, being raised here. Um, I'm, I'm like caught in the middle, right? And this book kind of captures that and what's it like, you know? But yeah, I've, I've just, I love this book and it's, it's just so good. Please read this. <laughs> I mean, despite, I think the only, the only thing that kind of differs from her experience and my own is like her sibling winds up being a member of the LGBTQ community and my brothers aren't. Um, but her love for her brothers is what I connected with in this book too. So there's that. So that's The Poet X by Elizabeth Oswedo. Now the next book I'm going to talk about is Dominicana by Angie Cruz. Now if The Poet X was my story, Dominicana was my mom's story, sort of. So this is a historical fiction book that was uh, published in 2019. And this follows Anna at 15 years old. She's married off to a man um, much older than she is in order for her family to be able to gain access to be able to move to the United States later on because of her immigration status and stuff. So she comes to New York, but her husband's a cheater. He's a liar. He's an ass. Um, and she winds up having to live on her own because her husband winds up going back to the Dominican Republic after the assassination of their dictator Trujillo. And so he winds up going back there to handle like his investments, his land and his property over there. And she's kind of left by herself. Her brother-in-law is also there and he kind of helps her. But yeah, this is just her story. The reason why I say that this is like my mom's story is the idea of, of coming to a new country, especially a country where you don't even know the language. Like my mom only speaks Spanish and she comes, you know, I mean, now she knows more, right? But in general, she only speaks Spanish. And it's this whole idea about coming to a new place, you don't know the language and you're trying to make a life for yourself despite the circumstances that um, are given to you. Again, beautifully written, a page turner, and another book I just absolutely loved. Um, this was a finalist for the Women's Award or the Women's Prize in Fiction. And it was actually just recently translated into Spanish as well. So I need to get my mom a copy of this book. But yeah, this is just one of my favorites. I feel like it's really good. It's such a good book. It tells, it's a great story about the immigrant experience. I just, I just love this. Even the ending, I felt like was really true to the experience of many immigrants in this story, you know, where there's this idea of, of happiness versus responsibility. And I, I really felt like this was just a really great book. Please check this out if you haven't. Um, that's Dominicana by Angie Cruz. The last book I'm going to talk about is one that kind of caught me by surprise. And it's a translated work. This one is The Mutations by Jorge Comenzar. I actually read the translated version and it was translated by Charlotte Will Charlotte Whittle in uh, 2019. I grabbed this book from my library. I wasn't looking for it. It was never on my radar. I was just walking in the library and the, co and the cover was just so striking and beautiful to me that I had to pick it up and see what it was about. I read the um, synopsis of it and was immediately like, I need to read this book. 
uh, if you see from the cover, uh, it's got this beautiful bird on the cover. I love birds. I love parrots. I had a parrot for about 24 years. Um, I got her when I was three and she passed away like a few years ago. Um, but I always thought she was just so beautiful. I'll put a picture of her. She was just so beautiful. And I've always loved birds and parrots especially. And to just see one on the cover, I'm like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but the story itself is what's important, right? So this is the story of Ramon and he's pretty much the head of the household. He's very outspoken. He's an atheist. That's another thing that's very essential to the story. He winds up having to get his tongue amputated because he winds up getting cancer on his tongue. And so he lost his voice lost his position of power in his family. This story follows like the ramifications of that happening and the people and how it affects the people around him. Include to include his two children, one going through like an eating disorder, the other one going through maybe um sex addiction maybe or it has perspectives from his wife who now has to transition to being the head of the household and the maid that was in their house. Remember he was a lawyer, so they're the maid her compulsions to try to make him happy or like to make the household happy. She even gives him a bird to be like his companion. And even the chapters about him and the bird were amazing. Um, it follows like his therapist, the oncologist, the people focusing or the people that are researching the type of cancer that they took from his tongue, um, like the cancer cells and they're like researching it and stuff. Again, I don't read books about, you know, cancer and stuff like that. This this book was just one of those that I read on a whim and I found it to be so beautifully written and so original, so weird and funny, but it, it's like dense, but it makes you think. I just thought it was so good. Please give this a chance. Another short book. Um, so just try it out because I was surprised by how good it was. I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed this book and I'm surprised I haven't gotten myself a physical copy of this so that way I can reread it anytime I want. <laughs> it's an amazing book. Please give it a chance. But yeah, those are my favorite books right now. My top 10 books. I hope I gave, uh, I hope I gave 10. I'm pretty sure I gave 10. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so those are my top 10 books. Tell me in the comments, what are your favorite books? Have you read any of these? Am I tripping for liking these? Like, I don't think I am. I think they're really good. But let me know what you think. Uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out. <laughs>